Hi, this is Diana Nafisi from Parque Mexico in Mexico City. I'm here with David Lida. David Lida is one of our resident experts on Mexico City, and he's author of the book, First Stop in the New World, Mexico City, Capital of the 21st Century. David, could you tell me a little bit about the title of your book and why you call it First Stop in the 21st Century? Okay, well, it's Capital of the 21st I call it First Stop in the New World, which is, um, you know, a, a sort of a play on words because it's the new world in the sense of the Spaniards coming from the old world to the new world. This was the first city that they uh, that they came upon. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the subtitle, Capital of the 21st Century, um, look, more than half of the people in the world today live in cities. Most of them are not neat, orderly cities like New York or Paris or London. They're, they're sprawling, chaotic mega cities like Mumbai, Shanghai, Beijing, Lagos. Um, each of them is different and each of them deserves its own book. But if you understand how one of, any one of them works, you start to understand how most city dwellers survive. Mm -hmm. so, so I try to do a portrait of Mexico City and principally show you who the people are who live here and how they, how they get by. And if you understand that, you start to understand how many, many people in the world live. So based on your understanding of Mexico City, on a macro level, what economic impact do you feel the swine flu will have on the economy? I, I actually believe the greatest repercussions of this crisis are going to be economic, not sanitary or health related. Mm -hmm. um, from the top down or the bottom up, however you want to look at it, um, you know, the businesses, the restaurants, the hotels, uh, the bars, I mean, they've really taken a terrible hit. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, 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 having virtually no business in the last 10 days. But I'm even more concerned about people on the lower end of the, the survival scale. I mean, most people who live in Mexico City live day by day. They have no savings. Whatever they make today is what gets them through tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And, and um, the repercussions of those people being out of commission for a couple of weeks is is pretty dire. I, I'm talking about, for instance, just to give you an example, they've closed down government buildings. Most government buildings are cleaned by women, single mothers principally, who make 50 pesos a day, uh, 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 the minimum wage, which is about $3.50 at the current, current exchange rate. Um, they have no insurance. Um, they, have no, they, they have no backup if uh -huh. they don't get paid that day. Nobody's paying them, and and so you know they've got children to feed. Maybe they live with you know their sisters, their mothers, whatever. I wonder how those people are going to survive. Absolutely, and especially with the impact of the school closings too. Yeah. Well, th again, that's it's probably a great idea to close the schools. When I was a kid in New York, I got the flu every winter, and so did half my class. It was just you know kids do give the flu one to another. The problem though is, in a, in a city with an economy like this, where roughly half the people live at the poverty level, what are you gonna, who's gonna take care of the kids if you're supposed to go to work? Um, this is a big issue and I think it will be the biggest issue of this crisis. This is really the third hit for Mexico City in the past six months. In the past six months, we've seen the drug war escalating in Mexico, we've had a global economic downturn, and now we're battling with this virus. What do you think is going to be the path back to recovery for Mexico City? All I can say to that is if you look at the history of Mexico City, you've got 700 years of flood, famine, earthquake, uh, killer diseases, um, corruption, crime, poverty, pollution, yet somehow this city survives all that and some of the residents at least thrive and I think all I can hope is that people will, that this this crisis will pass quickly and that people will get back to the image that they should have of Mexico City because it is indeed culturally, historically, architecturally, any way you look at it, one of the great cities of the world. Absolutely, David, and thank you so much for writing your fantastic book to help share your perspective about Mexico City with the world. Please check out David Lita's blog at davidlita.com. This is Diana Nafisi from beautiful Parque Mexico in Mexico City. Have a great day. Thanks, David. Thank you.